In this lecture, we are going to discuss the analysis of a suspension bridge subjected to uniformly distributed loads. This video is a continuation of lectures SA62 and SA63. Consider a simple pedestrian suspension bridge. The deck of the bridge hangs freely from two main cables via a series of vertical hangers. Our main objective is to determine the maximum tension force in the main cables and the reaction forces acting at the posts. The bridge has a length of 25 metres and a width of 1 metre. The distance from the top of the bridge to the deck is 3.65 metres. Each main cable has a maximum sag of 3.05 metres. Let's assume that the total weight of the bridge deck is 10 kilonewtons. Since this weight is to be supported by the two cables, each cable must carry a load of 5 kilonewtons. Given that the bridge is 25 metres in length, the uniformly distributed load acting on each cable equals 200 newtons per meter. With this in mind, we want to analyze this cable system under a uniformly distributed load of 200 newtons per meter. We can assume that the posts at the end of each main cable act as pin connections. Although the bridge could be subjected to one or more concentrated loads, we start our analysis assuming no such load is present. The only load to consider is the uniformly distributed dead load due to the weight of the bridge deck. Let's draw the free body diagram of the system. Since the ends of the cable are pinned, we end up with a pair of reaction forces at points A and B. Please note the position of the coordinate system. We have placed the origin of the system at the lowest point of the cable. If we cut the cable at its centre like this, the free body diagram of the right segment of the system becomes T0 is the tension force in the cable at the cut point. We can determine T0 using a moment equilibrium equation. The sum of the moments about point B must be zero. Therefore, T0 is equal to. Knowing T0, we can now determine the reaction forces at B by setting the sum of the forces in the x and y directions to zero, like this. Given the support reactions at B, we can easily determine the reaction forces at A using the static equilibrium equations. Suppose we are asked to come up with an equation for the tension force in the cable. Such an equation can be used to determine the location and magnitude of the maximum tension force that the cable must be able to carry. Let's start by writing a parabolic equation describing the shape of the cable. The equation was derived in lecture SA62. Please review that lecture if you wish to see the details of the derivation. For this specific cable, the equation can be written as Now suppose we cut the cable at some arbitrary point to the right of the origin, where the height of the cable at an arbitrary point x is given by this equation. We can determine the horizontal and vertical components of the tension force at the cut point using the static equilibrium equations. Then, the tension force in the cable can be expressed mathematically using the Pythagorean theorem. This equation tells us that the tension force attains its maximum value when x is maximized. Given the geometry of the bridge, we know that x cannot exceed 12.5 meters. Therefore, the tension in the cable reaches its maximum value at x equals 12.5. That is, tension in the cable is maximized at the supports. The magnitude of this maximum force 
is 5,700 newtons. Suppose we also wish to determine the overall length of the cable. This can be done using the parabolic equation that defines the cable's shape. Consider a very small segment of the cable. We denote the length of the segment as ds. Since this length is very small, we can assume it to be the hypotenuse of a right triangle with base 1 and height dy dx. That is, if we take the base of the triangle to be a unit length, the height of the triangle becomes the change in y with respect to x. Since we know the expression for y, we can easily determine dy dx by differentiating y with respect to x. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can write ds in terms of dy dx like this. Or, if we integrate both sides of this equation, we get length s. This is half the length of the cable. If we multiply it by 2, we get the total length. Great, but how do we analyse the cable if the bridge is subjected to one or more concentrated loads? We can easily deal with concentrated loads if we make a reasonable assumption and an approximation. The assumption would be that the cable remains parabolic in shape even when concentrated loads are present. This is a reasonable assumption to make if one is interested in only an approximate solution to the problem. Under this assumption, we can approximate the applied concentrated loads by replacing them with an equivalent distributed load. We can then analyse the cable as was just illustrated. Suppose our bridge is subjected to four concentrated live loads as well as the uniformly distributed dead load. To determine the equivalent distributed live load, we first add up the individual concentrated loads. Then we divide the total load by the length of the bridge in order to determine the magnitude of the equivalent distributed live load. Suppose the concentrated loads on the bridge add up to 4,000 newtons. When we divide this load by the length of the bridge, we get a distributed load magnitude of 160 newtons per meter. Adding the distributed live load to the distributed dead load, we get a total distributed load of 360 newtons per meter. To analyze the cable system under this loading scenario, we start by drawing the system's free body diagram. We can determine the support reactions at point B by cutting the cable at its midpoint. The tension force in the cable at the cut point can be calculated using the moment equilibrium equation written about point B. Then we sum the forces in the x and y directions in order to determine the horizontal and vertical reaction forces at B. Recall the equation for parabola for such a cable. For this specific loading scenario, the equation is To express the tension force in terms of x, we cut a segment of the cable to the right of the origin. We then write the x and y components of the tension force at the cut point using the equilibrium equations. Therefore, the algebraic equation for tension in the cable can be written as Since the maximum tension force occurs at x equals 12.5, we can calculate T max like this. In summary, for the combined live and dead loads, we get these support reactions and this maximum tension force, which develops in the cable at the support points. Here are two exercise problems dealing with cables subjected to uniformly distributed loads.